Hey guys, this is Josh. So I wanted to always start a pack opening show on my YouTube channel. And I thought I could open, maybe once a month I could open up a box of something, maybe even uh, a fat pack or something like that on Friday Night Magic FNM. But I think I should open up a pack a day, every weekday, for as long as possible. So what I'm doing is, it's a show called Crack Packers, Pack Crackers, Pack Crackers, we'll say Pack Crackers. What it is, every weekday I'm going to open up a new pack of cards, Magic the Gathering. Could be from the newest set that came out, could be from uh, like something like this, a three pack type of deal. Uh, usually I'll probably just open one booster pack from a new set, or any set that I might have. And maybe on special days I'll open like a three pack like this or even a whole fat pack or something. But <clears throat> today I'm opening up a th three booster pack with a promo card. I got it from Rite Aid. It was $12. So that's roughly about four bucks a pack. And you get a free card. That's cool. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything really good in this. Looks like the this one, the first one is probably cons of Tarkir, maybe dragons of Tarkir. Second one is purple, so it's probably one of the Nyx. One of the Theros block, probably journey into Nyx. This last one is probably a corset. I've seen some people on YouTube actually get like really old packs and stuff that they uh, got a lot of money cards from, but we'll see how this goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this for you. I'm going to go through some of the cards, see what I get. Maybe get a really good card in this. But we'll see how that goes. Got my promo card, which is a Genesis Hydra. It costs two green and an X. <clears throat> and when you cast Genesis Hydra, you may reveal the top X card of your library. You may put a non-land permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them into the battlefield. Then shuffle library and it also enters with X plus one plus one counters on it. So if this is a late game thing, it might be nice if you have a lot of mana to use. So put that aside. I uh, got a cons, journey into next. Oh, fate reforged. Okay, that's also from the cons of Tarkir block. So I think I'm going to start with journey into next. So I'll open that first. So we're going to crack this pack see how this goes first card first I'll get rid of the bird token 2-2 two, two flyer a swamp my first card <clears throat> which is a Farica's chosen I'll zoom in a little bit here that's out I should go in Farica's chosen See how long that my camera takes to actually focus, and it's not going to. Awesome. Oh, it just did as I moved it. Oh well, this is good enough. <clears throat> is a Farrakis chosen it has death touch one one for one black mana. Next card is Font of Fortunes. I it is an enchantment for two. I can pay a blue and one of any color to sacrifice it and draw two cards. I got a sigled skink, which is better than a sigiled skunk, as it turns out. It is a two drop for whenever sigiled skink attacks, I can scry one. It's two one as well. Then I got a Johnny's Presence, a one white mana instant. With that, uh, it has Strive and a Johnny's Presence cost two colorless and a white more to cast for each target beyond the first and any number of target creatures. Each get a plus one plus, each get plus one plus one and gain indestructible until end of turn. Then we have a Golden Hind which is an elk of some sort. Costs two, and I can tap to add one to my mana pool of green, and it's 2-1. It's not too bad card. 
for common. Then we got Feast of Dreams, Destroy Target Enchanted Creature or Enchanted Enchantment Creature. Then we have a Supply Line Cranes. Cost three, two white, it's two four with flying, and when it enters the battlefield, I can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Kind of expensive, but it's all right, I suppose. Now I also have an enchantment creature, Thassa's Devourer. Thassa ever needs something devoured? Calls this guy. Has constellation whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under my control. Target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his graveyard. Then for the I think the no, second to last common. We have a Desecration Plague, which sounds terrible, but it costs four mana, and I can destroy target enchantment or land. Now for the last common, Flame Speaker's Will, one red mana, and this enchantment aura, enchanted creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and whenever enchanted creature com deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice Flame Speaker's Will if I do destroy target artifacts. Now we are on to the uncommons. This is Basera Tower Archer. For two mana for 2-1 has Hexproof and Reach. <clears throat> then have a Deserter's Quarters. That's an artifact for two. I may choose not to untap this during my untap step, but I can pay six to tap target creature and doesn't untap until its control is untap step as long as this remains tap, tap, tip, tap, tap. And we got a brain maggot, which is terrible. I mean, it's a nice card, but it'd just be terrible to have brain maggots. I'm just saying. Two mana, one black. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand. I choose a non land card from it, exile that card until Brain Maggot leaves the battlefield. It's 1 1 insect. And my lovely little rare card is a Master of the Feast. Fix the zoom a bit. Master of the Feast costs 3 for a 5-5 five, five creature, already great. And has flying at the beginning of my upkeep, each opponent draws a card. I said that's a pretty decent trade for a 3 cost 5-5 five, five guy. So that was my journey into Nyx pack. Now I'll go with Cons of Tarkir. So I'm pretty sure that was the first one in the, in the block. Let's crack this pack open real quick like. And I'll take out the land card, which is mountain, and that. So first card is a Bloodfire Expert, a 3-1 for 2 with prowess. I have Savage Punch. This bear's all like, oh shit, all the bears are going to make fun of me knowing this dude punched me. It's a 2 cost, and I can choose a creature to fight. Then for two mana, I get a two one a Inoc Bondkin Hound Soldier. I'm assuming that's what that is. It has Outlast for two, and each creature I control with plus one plus one counter on it gets first strike. Then I got Shatter for two, so red instant, destroy target artifact. I got Bitter Revelation. Look at the top four cards of my library. Put two of them in my hand. The rest on into the graveyard. And I lose two life. Not too shabby for four. Force away for two. Return target creature to its owner's hand. And it has Ferocious, which will. If I control creature four greater, I may draw a card. If I don't. Dis if I do discard a card. Now I have Rakushas, Rakashas, Rakshas, Rakshasas, Secret for two mana, sorcery, black. Target opponent discards two cards from the top of the top two cards of his library. 
into the graveyard. I fucked that up, but you could read it, maybe, if my camera zoomed in enough. Now I have uh, five cost three two. Uh, it is a human monk named Mystic of a Hidden Way. Uh, it can't be blocked, so that's cool, and it has morph for three. Then I have oh, is that a looks like I got a foil? Got a foil on this one. Accidentally peeked. Couldn't help myself. But I got a foil. Anyway, treasure cruise for eight mana. Just this better be fucking awesome. Uh, I can delve to pay for it. I guess that's okay. Draw three cards. Nah. Not that great of one. And my first uncommon kin tree in no invocation. Costs three man two mana, one green, one black. I can put an XX black and green spirit warrior creature token on the battlefield where X is the greatest toughness among creatures I control. Not too shabby. Even for an early game. Now I have Armament Armament Corpse for five mana. Uh, black, a green, and a white, and two of any sort. And when it enters the battlefield, I can distribute two plus one plus one counters among two, one or two target creatures I control. And it's four four, so not too shabby. Then I have a Tusk Guard Captain. That is a two three for three. It has Outlast. And each creature I control with plus one plus one counter on it also has Trample. So there's that. <clears throat> And for my rare, I have a Meandering Tower Shell for 5 mana, has Island Walk, 5-9, big fella, and whenever it attacks, exile it, return it to the battlefield under my control tapped, and attacking at the beginning of the Declare Attacker steps on my next turn. As long as I don't have to pay for it when it comes back, I guess that's okay. Oh, and I got double rares. Look at that. My other rare, which is a foil. Look how shiny that shit is. Shiny. Ooh. I got a Sagu Mauler. Put that back down. Sagu Mauler. Costs six. It's a six six with trample and hexproof, and I can morph four five. Two rares, one pack. That's how I do it. Now we got Fate Reforged. Last pack of my three pack. So I'm going to open up that. I actually don't have a whole lot of Fate Reforged cards, actually. So this is going to be a little special. Maybe. Oh, oh, accidentally peek. Looks like I got another foil. But first, I uh, looked at it. Whoops. First, I have a Thornwood Falls. And there's Battlefield Tap for a green or a blue and a manifest creature token so let's see here so I got oh there's that name again no Rakshasa's Disdain for two it's an instant and counter target spell unless this control plays one for each card in my graveyard now I got an instant reach of shadows I can destroy target creature that's one or more colors for five. Hooded Assassin for three. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Hooded Assassin or destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn. Then I got an Avon Skirmisher for one. One, one flying. Not too bad on your first turn to get that guy out, but other than that, kind of worthless. Now I have a Lotus Path Jin. It is 2-3 flying, 4-4, four, four, and it has prowess. Then I have lightning shrieker. It's a dragon. It has flying, trample, and haste. At the beginning of the end step, lightning shriekers. Owner shuffles into his or her library. It's 5-5 five, five for 5. A knock guide. For two, it's one one, but when it enters the battlefield, I choose one, put a plus one plus one counter on it, or search my library for basic land card, reveal it, shuffle my library, and put that card on top of it. Then I have a sand step outcast, human warrior. Straighten this up a bit. Human warrior, when it enters the battlefield, choose one, put a plus one counter on it, 
or put a 1-1 one, one white breach spirit creature token with flying into the battlefield or something, I don't know. Smoldering Efreet, which sounds like a STD more than anything else, is a 2 cost 2-2. Two, two. When it dies, it deals 2 damage to you. A lot of 2s. <clears throat> My first uncommon, a Valorous Stance. I can choose one. Uh, target creature gains indestructible until, until end of turn, or destroy target creature with toughness four or greater. For two. Not too shabby for a white card. It's pretty fly for a white card. Winds of Qualcisma. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. And has ferocious if you control a creature with power four or greater. Instead, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. And I'm assuming my last uncommon is an elite scale guard. It is 2 3 for 5, so it has better have a pretty good uh, thing. When it enters the Battlefield bolster two bolster bolster. Choose a creature with at least with the least toughness among creatures I control and put two plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever a creature I control with plus one plus one counter on it attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. And my rare is a Shuyun the Silent Tempest. It has prowess, and whenever I cast a non-creature spell, I may pay either a red or white, and another either red or white. If I do, target creature gains double strike until end of turn, and it's 3-2 for 3. And my foil is a Mardu rune mark for 2-3 mana. It has enchant creature, which gets plus two plus two, and has first strike as long as I control a white or black permanent. So that's what I got this time around. <clears throat> I got two foils out of two packs, which isn't bad. I got a double rare pack, which is great, if you ask me. And I got eh, semi-decent rares overall. I guess since I had four rares out of three packs, I can't really complain. So that's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do, probably tomorrow, is open up, start opening up a box of the Battle for Zendikar set. Since as I'm recording this, uh, Oath of the Gatewatch I think is the next one. That's not quite out yet. So I'm waiting for that one. But I'll definitely have at least, technically I got three foils out of three packs. So that's pretty good. And three rares out of three packs as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to open up uh, some of the Battle for Zendikar on my next episode of Pack Crackers. I had to think about it. I didn't want to say Crack Packers because that would imply something different that I don't want people knowing about or being true at all. So, got five good cards, six good cards, so that's pretty good. And I'm gonna pre-order the new set, Battle for Zen, or not Battle for Zen, the card just said that. The Oath of the Gatewatch, I'm gonna pre-order that, and once that comes in, I'll start opening packs there. Now, like I said, I'm gonna do a pack a day. Uh, I might even do some kind of special things for maybe the 100th episode or 200th episode. I might open a fat pack or we'll see. But I do want to thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe, click on that like button, tell your friends, your families, share it.